Welcome back to Come On You Sports TV, where we talk about everything Tottenham. Today we are previewing the match between Tottenham and Chelsea, taking place at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Kickoff Monday Night Football uh, from 8 p.m. To join me in previewing Poch's return to Tottenham, we, say, we call it, uh, I think we're t- titling this edition uh, Poch Returns. Cheers or Tears. Uh, yes, join us on the other side to, to look at that will be a tumor. In the meantime, I hope this works. Uh, bear with me one second. Come on, you Spurs. Welcome back, uh, Poch Returns. Cheers or tears. Uh, good day, everyone, wherever you may be uh, watching this from. Uh, it could be evening, morning, afternoon, or night. Uh, welcome back to Come On Esports TV to join us to preview this match. Uh, it's Truma. Truma, how are you? Oh, fantastically great. Thank you. Uh, cheers for Ange. Cheers for Poch. Unfortunate for Poch, but there you go. Um, we'll start with a little housekeeping. Um, if you're joining us for the first time, welcome to Come On You Spurs TV. Uh, we'd like to ask for a little favor if you could just smash the like button. Um, click on the notification bell to let you know anytime we, we're, we're pushing out or bringing out content. And if you could subscribe and if you could leave a comment on what you've heard what you'd like us to talk about or anything in general about Tottenham. So come on, you Spurs. Thank you for that. Yes, so we're back. Uh, the Premier League is back. Uh, we had, came back last week and then we had this real... Um, how was it? How, was, how, how would you call it last, like the last match? How, how would you rate that last match? I mean, given that... Um, I... Go on. It's a game of two halves. Game of two halves. Game of two halves. Uh, we dominated the first half and scored. The second half, we scored again. We didn't really need to up our game. And then um, I, I felt they scored a goal that could have been ruled out as well. We could have ended up with a clean sheet. But I think the energy levels dropped. Uh, according to Angie, it's the worst second half we've had in his tenure. So... I'm I still surprised we're not calling for a replay for that, for that goal that was not uh, uh, I was allowed to start. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> no, well, well, since we won the game, we, we wouldn't call for a replay. But oh, really? okay, had, it, right. had, 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 the re, had the result been anything else, why not? Replay, replay season is replay season. Is, but it's, 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 I think it set us up for a very good game because I think we sort of took Crystal Palace for granted in a very strange way. And with Chelsea, I think our you know Spurs are up for this one because you have a situation where it's a London derby. Um, Chelsea and us, we, it, we've had a very poor, poor history against uh, uh, Chelsea in terms of wins or losses, whichever way you want to term it. And then Chelsea had the temerity, the audacity to uh, to hire our former. A former love, so to speak, in uh, Maurizio Pochettino. So it's a return of Pochettino, the man who we can look at in the modern era of Tottenham to say he actually gave us a foundation to reach for better things that never transpired after he left four years ago. So it's a it's a it's a huge game on so many different levels. There's so many, it's like an onion. There's so many levels and layers to this particular game. There's so many battles and uh, things that we're expecting to see or not see. Talk, talking of layers and, and, um, and, and you know, uh, onion, onion, onion peels, if you like, uh, for, for this match. And yeah, like you said, you rightly said that we didn't, um, sorry, not that we didn't, that um, he went on and joined Chelsea after being, like, laying the foundation for what people love to see about Tottenham, at least in the in this, in quote, modern 21st century era, if you like, I think Port has been what I call possibly one of our most um, admirable um, managers that we've seen 
in modern times. And even though he hasn't really won, he didn't win anything. I mean, he came close by a few times. We called us the first Champions League final, called us to um, a couple of um, League Cup finals and uh, plenty of FA Cup semi-finals as well. So, and we came second in the league. I think we came fourth. I mean, we, I'm not sure we ever came out of top four while, while he was um, while he was manager. So, no, he, yeah. Yeah, it's, it, it was a real, 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 real uh, boost to our ego. So, I mean, um, I remember the songs that we used to sing for, for, for Poch. Uh, it's magic, right? <laughs> now, uh, it's magic seems to have eluded him at Chelsea. And he's gone off to, to I, I think, I'm not sure if I alluded to this, but he went off to PSG and won the title. And um, that's probably his first trophy, if you like, uh, since he became... Uh, Came, came went to management and um, he got sacked you know and um, so well, it's come to Chelsea Chelsea I mean plenty of riches and plenty of money and a bit of tunnel themselves they haven't had a good start to this season and on the one hand people are looking at it and saying mm, did we dodge a bullet there because I mean when we had the um, area of people who seem to be interested in, in uh, who are being considered for, for us as coach for Tottenham uh, he was one of the people that, I mean, a little fans, if you like, where, or the, the bookies and everyone was saying, oh, bring back Poch and, you know, he would, he would make a good return and that, that, you know, sort of thing. But for some reason, the club said they never had him in the running and he said the club never contacted him, you know. Now, for the benefit of hindsight, even though it's early stages yet, you know, um, we were thinking, okay, we've got him post the Koglu, Ange, and Ange has essentially transformed the team. And um, it's a question of don't look back in anger. <laughs> you know? And uh, yeah, it's, it's been... Yeah, no, it's... Been... it's yeah. No, no, you're, yeah, you're, you're very right. I think um, every manager that has followed uh, Pochettino has lived in his shadow, directly or indirectly. Um, There's this um, joke going on amongst Spurs fans that... Um, we call Poch Ayen Poch, you know, he's been sent to destroy Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that wouldn't be far-fetched. That wouldn't be far-fetched. Yeah, but and, uh, the thing, about, the thing about him that's interesting, yeah. The thing but, about him that's interesting is... Well, one of the things about football, and we all know is this, right? Football, sometimes things turn around very, very quickly. I mean, things may not even happen this season at all. You know, he might come back next season... Even be two seasons from now, and you look back at this time and you see him with with uh, with a smile, and he's winning things, and everyone forgets that this ever happened at all in the first place, you know, because he's got an area of talent there. I mean, quite um, expensively put together, and I mean, a lot of those players would would in in theory uh, be the uh, what you might call uh, crown jewels in other teams, you know, but. Um, they just haven't, for some reason, haven't gelled together. I mean, they've got, uh, you know, multiplicity of talented football in, in that team. Sure. And uh, you just sort of have this notion, this, this feeling that when they come together, they will, it will be very, very destructive, you know, um, when, when they do come together. You saw glimpses of it against um, Arsenal uh, when they played them, um, I think, was it last match at the, um, at, 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 at the bridge? Oh, the match before this one, and you saw, yeah. you saw, um, hmm. but at the same time, you did see the other side of Chelsea again. Again, they had against Brentford, Brentford played them on the counter, and um, they again lost 2 uh, 0. So, you're thinking to yourself, hmm, okay, they played, they played um, during the week in, in the League Cup, and they won. Well, in quote, thankfully, because that means. Potentially, that puts a bit of, takes, takes a bit of pressure off them. But in the league, uh, they've lost twice on the trot, you know. Oh, well, they haven't lost twice. They've, they've drawn one and lost one. So Lost one, yeah. Last time they came to the, to, to, to Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, we beat, we beat them 2-0, if you recall. If you recall, the magic goal from... Yeah. Uh, uh, from skip. Uh, skip. Yeah, Skip this goal. And I think one more goal. I can't remember who scored the second goal. Was it Harry? I think Harry scored the second goal. It was, uh, it was, it was Kane, yeah. Harry yes. Kane scored, yeah. So, um, and we had a draw, a, a really front draw at the <laughs> at away, the, away, yeah. Um, away. The, the hair pulling, the hair pulling yeah, draw. Exactly, yeah, so yeah, that, that was Cucurella that, and Peter Romero. So, yeah, that was interesting. I think I, I just get the feeling that I mean, I don't know how things are going to pan out this season, but um, 
yeah, you just hope that um, the long the, the, run, the run continues. And if we well, I'm not saying if we when we win on on Monday, you know, <laughs> um, <laughs> it's it's uh, it, it means that we have gone eleven matches unbeaten. You know, I'm not sure the last time we did that, but this is uh, it will be a really good run for us. Um, you know, so on. but I, how do you how do you see us lining up? There's a lot of things to talk about for, for this match. I mean, last uh, time. well, yeah, yeah, you 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 are right about you're right about uh, going the eleven matches. There's a I can't remember the statistic I saw, but I saw I think I can't remember if it was a pure stat where if a team can go fifteen matches unbeaten at the start of the season with mostly wins majority of the wins and they don't lose in 15 matches they have a higher chance or higher chance of winning the league if they can go the first 15 games unbeaten and they win the majority i think over 80 percent of their games if they can win that and the first 15 they are they are bound to be top two so let's <laughs> i still keep holding out hope for that but yeah uh to Spurs' lineup um i think the only concern, the only real concern, I watched training today, I watched training yesterday, I watched some training videos from yesterday, um, Destiny Udogi hasn't come back in, they're still monitoring his ankle. Oh, wow, okay. So that was a, that was, that was a one person, and then, but everyone feels that Emerson will fill in and not Davies, because Davies was a bit out of it in the last game, but we don't know if Davies will come back in, but Emerson, when he came on, um, he had a stronger presence inverting into that midfield because he likes that. He's quite good at that. And he was quite good at covering the spaces as well. So Destiny Doggy is the is the only injury concern. Brenton Cole has been properly reintegrated now into the side. A question of I don't know if he will start. I think they will still go with Pape Matesa up until let's say Christmas when the fixtures start piling up. Then I think Brenton Cole will start. Up until then I don't see a change side. People are putting out that Brennan Johnson might be ready to start because of his impact off the bench in the last game where he set up a son's goal. And But I don't know. I just see Richarlison. I, I told you before, you know, and uh, I, 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 I'm a huge believer in dreams and, and in positive, the power of positive confession. <laughs> so I saw, I, I had a dream where Richarlison really stepped up in this game and tell us about that dream tell us about that dream of yours I mean I think I had said it was yeah it was very interesting I saw the scoreline as being five goals and and it brought back memories of the uh, Harry Kane coming out party where Harry Kane scored um, a trick against uh, Chelsea in a 5-3 win when Mourinho was Chelsea manager and um Pochettino, that was a, that was a time we now started seeing Pochettino's football flow out a bit more. And I saw the same thing. I, I just I just saw Richarlison scoring one uh, three goals. I think it was probably more than three goals he scored, but the scoreline was five. Um, I didn't I didn't see the scoreline to know what Chelsea scored, but I know we won. But I know I could see five goals, and I was like, wow. I said, if that happened on a Monday, and you know, come on, you Spurs nation, if you guys, you know, if you're with me. Just second that dream and second that prayer. <laughs> it's a nice, you know, nice, it would be nice. It would be nice to do that. But on a, on a, on a serious level, um, I don't think Spurs are going to change much. And we know this for a fact that Spurs scored two goals or more. The only time we blipped on that was against Luton, and that was only because we had a red card and we missed those chances at the start. We have we've really been two goals or more, and I think that that trend will continue. So, yeah. I see it continuing. Yeah, I mean, there's uh, there's a lot of um, optimism in the squad now because the last match, um, Rodrigo Bentancourt came back from playing his first match after uh, I mean eight long months away, or injured, and uh, the cheers he got in that team gave me reminiscence of teams that are done that, that go on and do really well in the course of the season. You see that. That camaraderie, that um, togetherness, that's yes, togetherness. That's you know that yeah. team spirit that sort of shines through, and you've seen that a lot in this in this season. We just see the Spurs team demonstrate that in in Oodles. and I mean, you see even Son has his leadership qualities. He pushes for the players who deserve the chairs, and he done, did that did that for you know 
I saw the Suma come on to sort of also try and whip up the crowd at the end of that match as well, you know. Uh, it, it was tough. Be- be- beautiful, beautiful scenes, beautiful <laughs> scenes. Yeah, yeah it, it, there's, a, there's, a, there's a togetherness and there is um, there's no hierarchical structure in terms of like, oh, this is like, you know how you have in Real Madrid, there are levels, there are the captains and then everybody else. So you have like the big players, Raul, Zidane, Figo, they are on one side and all the juniors are somewhere else. But in this one, you can even watch it in training. Van de Ven and Son messing around, Pape yeah. Matessa and Madison having their little thing. You know, it's 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 fun to watch. And Rodrigo Bentancourt coming at that end, you could see it. Like you could see the relief that he's back. Yeah. You could see the happiness in the squad and the fans as well. Like to be a Tottenham fan right now, you know, there are several things floating around that. Oh, we we're we're we're, we're making too much noise. We're hyping ourselves up. We think we're going to win the league, and no, it's it's just the sheer joy of going to watch our team, hoping and knowing that we can do well. That if nothing else, we will perform. We don't care about results, but our performances always lead to good results. And there's a good feeling. There's a feel good feeling coming to Spurs. You know, you have a straight talking manager who doesn't throw people under the bus. You have players who are willing to play for him. You know, you, you look at the situation, you contrast the situation at uh, Manchester United at the moment, arguably one of the biggest clubs in the world. And you're seeing what's going on in, at their club. And I wouldn't say we were like that a year ago, but you and I, we witnessed some dire matches. We witnessed fans splitting into different camps and factions and arguing amongst ourselves, the ownership on that exactly what's happening at United at the moment. And for a Spurs fan, you're just happy at the decisions that have been made, you know, like Ange Postacoglu, you said before, Pochettino coming back. And I, I read a wonderful article in The Athletic uh, by Charlie Ecoshare, where he was talking about the fact of how Daniel Levy did try to make a move for him uh, in t- 2021 when they were getting rid of Mourinho. And PSG blocked it. and when he now became available, the rest of the board were like, no, remember how toxic it was towards the end of his tenure. We shouldn't go back. And so many of us on different groups, you know, I was one of them. I was like, oh, come on, go back for him. Get him back. You know, he knows he knows the club. He knows the players. But Ange Postecoglou was so unexpected. But at the same time, it was just the right call. He's the right man at the right time, I believe, for this Spurs. And, and his methods are different from Pochettino's methods, but it's the same kind of purpose or journey. But Angie's version is 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 just is very very interesting. I think for Spurs fans, and we're enjoying it. You know, I don't know what Chelsea fans think of Pochettino and what, but he's slowly he's moved Spurs fans Ange from loving Poch to now being firmly behind Ange. Like I honestly see us like. Coming in, I don't think anyone. I don't know about booing um, Pochettino. I, I, I certainly wouldn't if I was going to the stadium. I wouldn't boo him. But rather than boo him, I would concentrate on singing songs for Ange. That's what I think. I, I prefer the fans to go full out, you know, loving Ange instead of booing. Pochettino. I'm loving big Ange. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That should be singing as soon as Chelsea walk on that pitch. Loving Big Gun should be sung from the rafters. That's my view. You can keep your Pochettino. <laughs> yeah, you can keep Pochettino. Conte and Mourinho. Mourinho. <laughs> yes. You know, yes. Just love yes. Big Ange, and that's and that's what we want. And I think that's the concentration. We should concentrate on our team. We shouldn't look at Chelsea as being, oh, you know, everyone goes about. And but you know, we've talked about this thing as well, where we we talked about the fact that you know generational curses and breaking chains. Chelsea is a chain that needs to be broken as well. We've done the 1230 kickoff. We've done the away days. We've done Friday. All these things that now, used to Now we're doing Spurs. London derbies as well. You know, winning now London derbies. Now the London derbies. derbies as well. We, we, we come for London derbies and we're not going to lose. First things we're not going to lose. Are we going to win? And if we're going to win, how, are we going to, how much are we going to win by? And yeah. that is just like a 180 change from where we were last year. And yeah, it's very impressive. Very impressive. I can't. I couldn't. I couldn't agree more. Now, where 
where we are now with this, with this, I mean, almost like with Benson Kobach, seems like we've got a new addition to our squad. He offers a lot more versatility in that midfield, you know. Um, he may not get start to begin with because obviously he's just coming back from injury, but it gives us options in that area, especially uh, coming up to a busy spell in the season. And it's come up at, come at a time when you, you think he can build up his fitness levels to be able to get match starts should he be required, you know, and I think that that's that's a good good positive we have in that direction. And we, we were speaking off air about what things would look like if we get maybe a boost to the squad in January with a few more acquisitions. And there's I thought as look, if someone like Van de Ven got injured or maybe um, Romero got injured, um, it would leave us short at the back that we might need another centre back to what we have now to. Of the, obviously, both of both of the squad, and we'll probably need maybe another top notch striker, you know. Um, I don't know, perhaps a, a one more midfielder, just that that would complete the the um, the the yeah, what the, 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 the puzzle. But I mean, you know, as Anne said, he's happy with what he's got, he might you know, make a few more additions, as we speak, and, and then we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll take him there. But one thing I love about Ange is that. And he he did say this in one one of his I'm not sure what one of his interviews and he said look in as much as I mean people have this list of a thing that you give to people it's like it's not it's not like going to Walmart and say I want this I want that I want that like, he actually, <laughs> <laughs> you know he actually goes not just to look for the um for the for the for the for the, for the, for the, for the position he actually scouts the player you know what sort of person the player is his attitude his you know yeah. another person is willing to come to wants to actually come and play for Tottenham and why they want to come and play for Tottenham not, not just for that though that guy would be a good addition to our squad you know and that he felt was a really good way of us being able to assess or him being able to assess um whether or not that person was um ideally suited to, to us as, as, a, as a club and i thought mm, that's interesting you know um I guess it's not just stats. It's also a matter of looking at the, at the, at the actual person itself and see his attitude, whether or not he could, you know, fit into the team, his ethos and mindset and stuff like that, you know. And well, clearly, mindset is a big thing with Ange, and I think he's got he's a, he's a really good coach in that man management side of things, and it's, and it's demonstrated that so far, both in his course, I mean, his, his press conferences, the way he communicates, the way he engages. And he has everyone on board and um, singing from the same hymn sheet, which is remarkable. I mean, given what we're used to <laughs> in, in the past, I, I think it also helps. The fact that he's, he, he has um, what you might call an English-speaking background, you know, so that sort of helps it. Because if you think about a lot of the coaches we had so far, I mean, before now, a lot of them were, were foreign coaches, you know, but um, well, non-English-speaking, if you like. Well, he's foreign, but he's, he's English-speaking from from Australia. But um, the others have, are, are come from Italian backgrounds or non-English speaking backgrounds. So yeah, it's been um, maybe they've got a sort of uh, translate stuff in the head for the sort of you know <laughs> uh, repeated in English, which, which may not necessarily work. Quite, but even then, even then, it still has this this notch, this appeal about him that makes him really, really good, um, good, good listening to you. You sit, you can sit for hours listening. To, I just talk even yeah. in the board. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. You know, and uh, I, I, I just love the fact he keeps reminding everybody that my re- the real magic for me starts in the second season. And and, and that is so frightening for me. Uh, you know, frightening in terms of like, my goodness, what are we going to see next year? Because he says, it's next year. This is not my real work. My real work now is to get these guys, is building a foundation and I'm going to put the building on top of it. And building the foundation has us after people are people are saying it in a way like, oh, like 10 games is just a thing. We're very much on Christmas. We're near Christmas. We're closer to Christmas than anything else. We're closer to the new year than anything else. And and he's dismissing it, saying, Yeah, it's good. They have played well, but they are learning how to be what I want them to be. They are not there yet. We were going to stumble at some point. And I'm looking at this guy going, you know, like, you, you know, like where, you know, like, you know, it's at school, you know, I, 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 I went to school where it was highly competitive, where like 10 people could like be tied for a hundred out of a hundred and you could come 19th and you scored 99, you know, or, or 98 out of a hundred. And 
you know, and so for some people, like scoring 98 out of 100 is the worst they could do. Like, you know, to them, it's like I'm lowering my standards. And you look at him now where for Tottenham fans, we're like, oh, my God, we're top. We're scoring all these goals. And he's saying, that's not the work. It's I'm just improving standards. You haven't reached my standard yet, but I'm improving you guys. And we're going along on this journey. And, and, you, and you actually feel it. And you start to think to yourself, this guy, honestly, like he, he, he rates himself. He really does. And he rates the people that work with him as well. And he's trying to tell everybody, look, I know who I am and I know what I can do. And if you believe in me, if you trust in me, if you follow what I what I say to you, we'll go somewhere where you've never been before. And the fact he's done it and repeated it, repeat, repeat, repeat. You're looking at Tottenham going, you know, everyone's going, only thing I can mess this up is Daniel Levy. And I don't think so. I think even if we didn't buy anybody, and I'm not saying we shouldn't, or we will, or we will not, it's, it's the, I've never met someone with so much self-belief who can transmit it to a team the way he has. Like, I haven't seen this since, you know, like people like Cruyff could do it. People like, and I'm not saying it's Cruyff or Ferguson. But... Sorry to interrupt you, Chuma. Out of interest, Go has ahead. any manager ever come to the Premier League and won the first, their first season? Uh, Mourinho. Oh, he did. Okay, Jose right. did. Jose did first year. Okay. Jose, I mean, Jose, Jose did. Jose did, and uh, Conte did too. <laughs> oh, okay. Conte did right. same. Okay. Jose and Conte both Chelsea, both Chelsea. Ironically, yes, both Chelsea. Oh, and did. then of course oh. I was that young man then as well. You could, you um, could almost the, the, the Matteo. He didn't win the league. He won Champions League. I won Champions League. Okay, right. Okay, yes. Yeah, so I won Champions League. Okay, right. Yes. He won Champions League. They were they were dire in the league. They were, they were horrible in the league. But he won right. the Champions League. Okay. The thing you have to say as well is, I'm not saying Andrew's impact is the same as Mourinho's, but you remember Mourinho coming here. We were we were we were all, you know, we we're all glued to his press conferences. Special one. I am one of the bottle. You know, Mourinho got us interested in watching press. The reason press conferences have the sort of stage they have now. Let's be honest. Is, is Jose Mourinho. And this is exactly how it was that first year with Jose Mourinho at Chelsea. And, you know, Chelsea fans can come out and say, well, Ange is, Ange is Mourinho. But it's the same kind of thing. Mourinho was a cultural oh, change. Apparently, there are four Chelsea managers Ange who won the Premier League change. in their first, 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 um, uh, you know. First year. First, first year. Uh, the first was, uh, I think. Wenger won, was... Wenger won of them. No. Jose Ancelotti. Ancelotti um, did, yes. Yeah. Chelsea. Think... Yeah. Yeah. Ancelotti, uh, Mourinho, Conte, and Pellegrini. Pellegrini, well, there you go. Yeah. So it's, it's not totally on, on head of. So, yeah, I mean, it, and... it, it, <laughs> it, it's not, it's not, not on head of, but the, but the similarities between those coaches is they were coaching like real powerhouses and, and they had a lot of backing behind them. Yeah. But in terms of pure coaching, none of them coached like a side like Spurs. And I, people always say it, it's a greater achievement. If you can take Spurs to win the league, my goodness, you know, you get your own street. You could get knighthood in, <laughs> a special knighthood in Tottenham if you could, if Tottenham could win the league. But, you know, I, I said I'm not there yet, but uh, Optimus Primus is already, is already there. I'm drinking from, from I'm drinking from the cup from the league cup already. I'm from the, from the, <laughs> <laughs> the Premier League cup already. <laughs> right, let's predict score lines. Let's predict score lines here. Tell me, what do you reckon? Um, because of who their striker is, Nicholas Jackson. I don't think he. If Nicholas Jackson is starting, I don't think he scores. Um. I can only see a 3 0 for Spurs, at least two goals. So 3 0. 3 0 for Spurs. Um, I'm still dreaming of the hat trick for Richarlison, but at worst, a brace for Richarlison. But 3 0. I'm still waiting for that team that are going to thump, really thump really hard, apart from Burnley <laughs> that we did, you know, but it could be this one. It could well be this one, you know, but um, wow. I'm not saying that it will be, but hey, it could well be. But uh, yes, let's, let's see how that goes. I think, yeah, like you said, it might be end up with 3 0 for Spurs. Richardson has hat trick, and hopefully some people get off his back and wouldn't say that it came off his shin, came off his toe, <laughs> and the uh, shoulder in, you know. 
<laughs> I had a yeah, lucky sure. lucky bounce or or a deflection off a defender, you know. But hey, yes, um, we both agreed on that score. That's um, most likely. I mean, we expect that Richardson would uh, end up on the score sheets and um, Tottenham come away with a win. Um, yeah, in, in terms of the uh, the the layout of the team. What do you think is going to happen? I know, I know, we've done it the other way around. Let's 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 look let's look at it. The, the kind of um, lineup. Um, I don't know if Udogi is coming back, so I would go um, Vicario, uh, Poro, Romero, Van de Ven. I would play Emerson and not Davies. I'll play Emerson in the. I game. think I think that's probably what's going to happen as well. As well, I, I agree yeah. with you. I mean, I was. I'll yeah. probably go with that for the, for the back line as well. Uh, middle of the uh, park. Middle of the park. I think. I think um, the game against Crystal Palace was one of the worst performances of the Suma all season, and that's not saying he played badly, but he was. You could tell he was so cautious not to get booked. So I think it sort of curtailed his his powers. I think we are going to see. Beast Suma, the beast version of Bisuma in this game. So Bisuma, um, Sa, and Madison in midfield. I was watching one one YouTube clip of him uh, when he went shopping for sneakers. I don't know if you saw that, that clip when I was interviewing yeah. him, you know, and he was talking about football in general and generally how what he thought of himself. And you know, someone said, I think the guy who was who who he was with was saying that look, he thought he was the best midfielder in the, in the league this season, right? And he didn't deflect it in some sort of fake um, humility or modesty. And he just he owned it. He said, "Look, he works very hard. He's very, very self. He has self confidence in terms of his own ability, and he feels that it's something that um, he deserves based on how much hard work he's put into his performance and ensuring that he has discipline and he has a lot of confidence in his teammates. You know who sort of you know support him in in that role. And you can see that this guy." is already huge for us right and it's going to be even super immense down the line because of that you know he has that ability about him which is not arrogance just just confidence you know and um i think that is going to be reflected in the way we play come come i'm 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 very excited about the fact that he has sa next to him right sa according to Ange, has this amazing positive energy about him as well all right and that, that positive energy, he can play on the right bar, he can be off, off in front, he can be striker's row, he can be in middle. And every time he gets the ball, he just, you know, he's so confident, you know, about, about his ability on the ball. And that's reflected in the fact that if you remember the second goal against um, Crystal Palace, that crossfield pass was... That crossfield pass was so... Was so you, 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 yeah, it was, it was spot on and you didn't expect it from him. Yeah. Crystal Palace probably didn't expect he had that kind of passing range. Absolutely. And then yeah. I think I think the, the, the crowning glory of that, it was, I mean, everybody in, in that goal did absolutely fantastic. You had, you know, the cushion header from, from Johnson, you know, who just, just you know, started cushioning it to um, Madison. And, Madison took and he knew ball. to run on. Yeah, and then yeah. to run on and then put the ball to him and he cut back to so Son was just absolutely super. It was, you know, that, that's, that's midfield working at his best, or sorry, attack working at his best, uh, transitioning from mid- midfield. And before, before Saar got that, before Saar got that ball, you know, you have to remember that Poro actually got out of two, Poro, two, 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 uh, yeah, two defenders. Yeah, and made a vast, yeah. Time, you know, I yeah. just came out of there and just gave it to, to Saar and that was just, an absolutely fantastic goal uh, from the way it was set up. So yeah, I mean, uh, take us to that midfield. Um, Bisuma, yeah. So Misuma Mi- saw and, and 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 Madison, who you know, I mean, words fail us regarding Madison. Madison, that the pass to the pass to the pass to Brandon Johnson was a nutmeg pass as well. Yeah. In fact, he got it under control. Two players converging on him, and he still rolled it, and then not make the guy to pass it. It's just it it's just Every single day for Madison, there's yes. no game Madison has been scored less than like a seven and a half or seven. Or it's seven. called assist. It's, as, it's called pre-assist assist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the hockey assist, the hockey assist. <laughs> and then, and then a player who I think is very unsung, but you know, 
you have to watch him to admire what he does, but people can't see it. It's Kulusevsky. Because oh. everyone expects Kulusevsky to be this, you know, oh, he kills his man and assists. No, Kulusevsky carries the ball in a way that he brings that ball forward and he's created chances that some people haven't taken in the squad. Yeah. If he had, if certain people had been more clinical, Richarlison I put down as one of them. Um, he set up uh, Saar as well. He set up Kusuma. If these guys could score, he would have like eight assists by now, seven, Absolutely. eight assists, something Absolutely. like that. He's 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 a wonderful ball carrier. In this team, he doesn't have to beat his fullback. He just has to carry that ball, shield it, take it forward. On the break, he's brilliant. Carry the ball. He just takes and out he's super good defensively as well. He's tracks back so very, well, you know. And, he's, and, and it's very difficult to check out the ball. Yeah, yeah he's, a, he's a unit. He knows how to position. He's he's one of those gifted players that knows how to position himself between the ball and, and the defender. So the defender has to go through him to get that ball and he concedes concede a foul. Or yeah. he will hold it long enough for his fellow players to come and, and, and assist him. It's, it's just brilliant. He just You see him rolling the ball under his under his foot and he's just, he's just this guy. And then you come up front and you just have... Um, you have Richarlison, who I think Richarlison just, you know, Richie is just this guy that, you know, he does a lot of work. He really does a lot of work. And I think if work could be rewarded with goals, Richie would be top scorer times 10 because he does a lot of brute work. And, you know, he's really, he's really energetic. He really bothers defenders. And him playing on that left and then switching with Son in and out, I think it works for him. And I think, like you said, there's going to be a game or a couple of games or a run of games where I think Richie will, he will reap the rewards. It's coming and we just don't know when. And as soon as it comes, I think it will, he's confident. I think this is a confidence game. We were talking on the on the on the Nigerian Spurs group about Harry Kane this afternoon, and you know there were people saying, "Oh, like you know, like people are putting him down." We, people weren't putting him down. Well, I said Kane is more hard work and confidence. I've never seen a player who works so hard on his game, and then his confidence, the things he's been able to do, has made him think he's invincible, he's invulnerable. So his confidence level is so high, he attempts things. You know, we you don't really want to talk about Harry Kane as much because he's not a Spurs player anymore, but. He scored a halfway line goal um, for Bayern Munich. You knew he was going to try that because, you know, Kane's confidence is through the roof. You know, Richarlison is going to get to that. He needs to get to that point where he's confident. If, if you watch him in Brazil for that, in that World Cup and his confidence was up there, he was trying those things, flicks, tricks, overhead kicks, because his confidence was high. Yeah. You know, he came back to Spurs and he was deflated again. Should he get back to those levels in terms of confidence, we're going to see a heck of a player. But the man of the the, the man who delivers every single game is Hyung Min Son. Spurs captain, Spurs leader. He leads by example. He sets the standard. He is a deadly assassin. He's just he's just everything you want in a forward player is in Son. He doesn't complain. He doesn't he doesn't whine or whinge at the referees. He's just there. And he's playing off the shoulder. He can run at your defenders. So I think defenders worry about Son. They're looking, where is he? Where is he? And you know, he's he's just he's just everything. He's you know, there's a there's a cartoon character, a superhero. Well, he's a he was a villain in a Batman comic called the Everywhere Man, because this guy had the ability to multiply himself and go and commit robberies everywhere. Son is the Everywhere Man. He could be back in the middle of the pitch. He could. Go forward. He could play off the shoulder. The everywhere man is Young Min Son. I love that. The everywhere man, eh? Kim Min Son. <laughs> right. So we've got the uh, midfield of um, Suma, Sa, and uh, Madison, Madison, right? And then yeah. attack of uh, Kulishevsky, Son, and uh, Richardson. So we say no Brandon Johnson for this one. it will probably come no. um, later. Come in. And hopefully... You have Jovan also on the bench as well, and also uh, Rodrigo Bentancor. So it's the bench is beginning to look strong as well, isn't it? You know, it uh, is. It is. You just need a little bit more more steel at the back, you know, just uh, to make the back bench look even more awesome. And then we've got Belize as well, young man who scored a goal yes. against uh, was it 
Port, Portsmouth. Peterborough. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it was Peterborough. Peterborough. Yeah, Peterborough, yeah. Peterborough for the other twenty ones. Yeah. Um, also the other twenty ones, even though they didn't they didn't win that match, but yes, his uh, confidence is, is building up and hopefully that that will help him out. That's it for now. Um, we look forward to the match. Uh, please join us for the post-match live stream, um, at 90 Minutes Unplugged, where we're going to be cheering for <laughs> and Poster Koglu and, and, and yes, uh, Poch, Poch, and, and tears. And tears for Poch. <laughs> <laughs> cheers right, for so Ange. Look, look forward to that. Uh, thank you so much. Right? It's been amazing thank having you, you guys. And if you guys agree with our comments we'll love with, with our with our thoughts i would love, love to hear, hear from you. Comments. let's see what you think, think about Thank the score you. line you know and uh, yeah all, all, all the predicted score line you know and what you think of, of um of our thoughts uh on this upcoming match you know in the meantime come on you oh yes. <laughs> take good care guys thanks <laughs>